Hey team, Connor here from HPA and welcome to this week's webinar. So this week we're going to be doing a bit of an introductory look to a CAD software, CAD program called FreeCAD. Um, this has been one of our probably most requested CAD programs to cover simply because in the name it's free. Um, so we're going to have a look at this program, see how it compares to the uh, other ones, uh, other software offerings, things that are similar to it like Fusion 360 or Onshape, uh, and then we're going to do a bit of a tour of the software, see how it all works and just model something basic at the end as well because that's usually the best way to get an idea for how it works. But before we get into the webinar, we'll do a little bit of an update around, about what's happening around HPA at the moment. So if we just jump onto my laptop screen, we can see an image here, which is the inside of our K20 powered CRX uh, Honda endurance race car. Um, so we ran this race car last season. It was a pre-built car that was purchased. Um, and although it performed very well reliability wise, it wasn't so good uh, and it didn't look that great. So this season it's going through a bit of a refresh um, with a lot of serious changes to it as well. Um, so Brandon, last week I showed this as well. Brandon was just getting started on it, but it's getting nearer to the final stages of completion here. Uh, Brandon's been working on the steering column mount. Um, so this way of doing this is kind of similar to what you'd see in a modern WRC car, uh, where we have this kind of triangulated structure coming out here and supporting this bracket here, uh, which mounts a bearing that kind of clamps and supports the steering column. Um, and that's all mounted really rigidly and strong. And the steering column is actually an electric power steering column out of a Toyota Yaris. Um, and then that, so column comes through here, you have your electric drive unit and then the column extends down into the rack, which has been changed from the hydraulic power steering rack that was in the vehicle to a manual power steering rack. So all of the assistance is done in this unit just here. Um, so to add to that, there is this uh, component here, which is a steering rack quickener or a, a steering ratio quickener. In this case, I think this one is a 1.5 to 1 ratio. Um, so essentially what that means would be for every full turn of the steering uh, out the other of the steering wheel out the other side and into the rack you get uh, that's multiplied by 1.5 so it just quickens the ratio up significantly um, but they are available in quicker ratios as well like a two to one or something like that um, so what Brandon's working on at the moment is basically just uh, fitting that through to the steering rack here which is in our newly fabricated chromoly subframe um, just with the use of these adapter U-joints. So basically he's got to go from the Yaris column to the quickener and then to the Honda steering rack. So a couple of adapters needed there with different splines uh, and things like that. Uh, and getting all that distance sorted out, making sure it all fits and works perfectly. So moving on from that, uh, this week's giveaway, um, which I'll get uh, Sam to drop the link to in the chat. Uh, we have one day left to enter, so um, completely free to enter. And it is a Max ECU Race Premium. It's a premium ECU, and it also comes with uh, the HPA VIP package, so a full suite of uh, all of our courses and VIP access. So one day left to enter get along to do that and let's just talk a little bit about the max race ecu so uh, we're actually running one of these in our honda city staff race car um, so we've got a honda city powered by a b18 cr engine and we've been using one of these with good success um, so it's capable of running a lot more than the four cylinder it has eight injector and ignition drive so that's able to run up to uh, a V8 essentially on sequential injection and uh, yeah, individual coil and plug. Um, and it has the full range of all the other uh, features that modern uh, premium ECUs like this would have um, with uh, onboard uh, wideband sensor and uh, map sensor as well. So great product um, and just jump along to that hpa.com forward slash giveaway page 
to enter for your chance to win that. Um, and then over on our YouTube channel, um, and this is kind of related to our courses as well, we've just put up this video here, which is a bit of a, um, well, it's uh, essentially a module from the course, so a little bit of a taste of what uh, the content in the course is like. Um, and this one is all around the upgrades of um, your brake calipers. So if you're looking at uh, upgrading your brake calipers, what needs to be considered? Um, and in the cases, uh, and basically all the considerations around that, and then uh, we also discuss some other reasons you might want to upgrade your calipers uh, other than just getting more power, things like reducing compliance, um, improving things like pad wear, um, and thermal capacity and things like that. So that's over on our YouTube channel, but uh, in relation to that, we've also recently released our brake system design and optimization course. So in this course, oh, I'll just mute that. So inside this course, we discuss uh, everything that you need to know about an automotive braking system and then all the other considerations around performance as well. So if I just jump down here into the curriculum, um, we cover some of the fundamentals of the brake system, how it all works uh, and what's important to performance, things like brake friction and longitudinal tyre forces and the very important brake bias. Um, so that's basically the balance of the brakes front to back on the vehicle. We discuss all the components involved in a braking system, those in a factory vehicle, but also those that are used in motorsport applications like uh, motorsport style pedal box with a bias bar, for example. We discuss how to take measurements uh, related to your braking system, so temperature, pressure, and position measurements. Uh, that position measurement is basically the position of your master cylinder. And if we compare that to things like pressure measurements, uh, we can highlight uh, area uh, issues with areas like compliance. Um, but this is all discussed in the course, of course. And then we get into the brake system design. So this doesn't matter if you're just modifying a current system on your vehicle um, so, or trying to work with a current system, understand how it stacks up and maybe the areas you might want to make changes in. Um, or if you're starting from scratch, you've just built a tube chassis race car or you've got a rolling shell uh, with an engine in it maybe, but you haven't done the brakes yet, you can design from scratch and figure out everything you need. So in that section, we run through how to do it all from kind of the first principles um, and how to calculate all the changes, uh, all the considerations that you need to figure out. But then we also have developed this calculator here um, which you'll have access to in the course and eventually will be up on the website as well. And this does a lot of the heavy lifting for you when it comes to the calculations uh, speeding up the process. So in this calculator, you're able to put in uh, vehicle data, basically uh, inputs around dimensions, how much the car weight weighs, um, and then along with the size of the braking package, um, so if you have a current setup, you can put that information in there. Or if you're working from scratch, this is where it allows you to try different setups. So you might be looking on the website for a supplier, maybe like Endless or Willwood, for example, and get the caliper piston sizes for calipers that you might be looking to buy. Enter them in here. The calculator then does all its calculations and spits out some results at the end, recommending master cylinder sizes um, and basically showing what the pedal effort uh, and travel requirements will be so we can get an idea for what the pedal feel will be um, and as well as highlighting some potential issues that we might have if there is any. But this is a really kind of special part down the bottom here with the brake bias plot. So if you're looking at this and you haven't done the course, it may seem a bit hard to understand, but once you understand, it is a very kind of simple way of visualizing how our brake bias uh, compares to what would be theoretically optimal for the vehicle. So on the vertical axis here, we have the forward bias. So that's the bias as a percentage of how much uh, the front brakes are doing 
uh, of the work compared to the rear. And we have the deceleration rate. So that's basically how much G-force we're pulling when we're on the brakes. Um, so the bias requirement essentially changes with how much deceleration uh, we're pulling because as we pull more deceleration, the weight shifts forward onto the front of the vehicle, uh, unloading the rear tires and loading the front tires more so that they can do more work and we want a more front bias. So this black line here is essentially what is uh, theoretically optimal for the vehicle. And you can see that that increases as the load shifts forward. Uh, and then this green area is about an optimal um, solution within about 7%. Um, and if we can stay within that window, we're doing pretty well. Um, but that is into the front bias area. So anything above this uh, black line is too much front bias. But when we get into the gray area here, we're basically leaving a lot of um, braking performance on the table, but if we're in the, the red area down here, then we're going to be in overly rearward bias, which would cause the rear brakes to lock first, and that is an unstable uh, situation. Basically, the rears will lock and the car will want to rotate, which can be uh, an advantage in some situations, but generally a more forward bias is going to be more stable and easier to drive. Again, this is all discussed in the course along with more detail. Um, after we cover that brake system design in the course, we also get into the practical skills section, um, discussing things like brake bleeding, brake bedding, setting up our brakes, um, tuning the temperatures and using the bias bar, things like that. And that is that upgrading calipers module here, which is shown on our YouTube channel. So again, just a little taste if you want to go over, check that out and get an idea for what the course is all about. Um, but relevant to today's discussion, we also have our CAD course. Uh, the CAD course, we use Fusion 360 for all of the um, demonstrations in the CAD course because it is available for free, although there is a paid version. Um, and we just find it's a really effective package that is very user friendly. Um, and saying that, if you do the CAD course, we really te uh, focus on teaching the fundamental skills of um, CAD modeling and 3D uh, and well CAD design. Sorry, CAD and 3D modeling. Um, teach the fundamentals so you can basically take that, design anything you want, and that is applicable to any program. So once you start getting a bit of experience with CAD software, you'll notice that a lot of them are very similar. The skills are all transferable, some more than others. Sometimes you can swap over to a new CAD program, and it only really takes a few hours to adjust to the differences. Um, in some other cases, it can be a little bit more difficult but they all work on a very similar system. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.